Welcome to Commissioner's Corner. I'm Commissioner Katie Walters. Children may need encouragement to learn to read, and reading out loud, even for adults, can make anyone nervous. Of course, learning to read is fundamental. To help new readers gain confidence and encourage a lifelong interest in books, the Kitsap Regional Library, in partnership with Therapy Dogs International, hosts Read to a Dog. Every week, young readers and patient dogs gather at the library to enjoy stories. Learn more about this fun program on this episode of Commissioner's Corner. I'm here today at the Sylvan Way branch of the library with Marcia and Kathleen, the youth librarian here, to discuss Read with the Dog. So welcome. Can you share a little bit about the program and how it got started and why? Read to a Dog is a program meant to help kids develop confidence and fluency when reading. And it started about 10 years ago. It was a collaboration between our former youth services librarian and Katha, who runs the Therapy Dogs International chapter here in Bremerton. What ages are best suited for this program? And when caregivers bring their, their children to the library for this program, what can they expect? Uh, it is suited for all ages, though we do see a lot more younger kids. Um, the kids who have just started reading and are in elementary school, we see those much more than the older kids, though those are welcome too, and sometimes they do come in and they thoroughly enjoy reading to the dogs. Parents, caregivers can expect when they come in is that their child will read to a dog for five minutes. They will sit on the floor, they will read to a dog. If they can't finish their story and there are other kids uh, waiting, we will ask them to give another kid a turn so everybody has a chance to read for at least five minutes. And they're welcome to read to all the dogs we have here and we usually have more than one. And it sounds like so much fun. So how does practicing reading to a dog really help the participants? So during the pandemic, oh, we saw a lot of young people had a lot of struggle with reading and a lot of kids fell behind. And so Read to a Dog has always helped with early literacy and building confidence, which is more important now than ever. So when is the program held? Because I know it's at the various different library branches and about how many can attend. At our particular branch, we do it on the second and fourth Thursdays of every month, and it occurs from 3.30 to 4.30. And if you'd like to check our Inspire or online for our other Read to a Dog instances at other branches, you're welcome to. Why would you recommend this program and who's it best suited for? I would recommend it to any kid who, one, likes animals, and two, likes reading or doesn't like reading in particular. Um, the kids who don't like reading but love animals, the, the dogs are the draw, but they relax when they see the dog, they want to pet the dog. We tell them, oh, just read to the dog, and that they start making positive associations between reading and the animal, and that transfers later on to other books, to other materials, to reading itself. And that's part of what the program is meant to do. Years ago, we had a family who used to come and the, the first time they came, they came for years, uh, but the very first time they came, the older brother read, the middle child read, and the little kid was sulking in the corner. The mom said, I can sit down and read for you and you can just pet the dog and said, no. And we tried and tried and finally, um, the librarian told him, you know, you don't really need to read to the dog. Do you want to just show the dog your book and tell him your story? And he just lit up and he goes, yes. So he grabs the book out of her hand, sits with the dog, with the dog and starts talking. And he talks and talks and talks. And he came every week for, for years. And uh, he became a really confident reader, you know. I love that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for sharing that. Is there anything else you'd like to add about this program? So in addition to um, building community at the library, we've seen that patrons who access this program, um, they come for, they, they might come for one program and then they find out about all of our other programs. Um, so we've gotten a lot of kids that will start to come to story times or other after school events and it's because they come to read to a dog. 
Well, that is awesome. I was going to ask you, what are some of the other programs that are for children? Yeah, so starting in June, we're going to be kicking off Summer Learning. That is a really big event at our library. We offer prizes and we offer special events and special programs. So this summer, our branch in particular is going to be hosting Jeff Evans. We'll be doing an outdoor movie night and we'll have a fun kickoff party after school in June. And it's not just for kids, too. The, the, the caregivers can be involved in that as well, right? Correct. Yeah, we have prizes for the adults who participate in summer learning as well this year. So, Oh, that's so awesome. So uh, for Read with the Dog and other programs at the library, where can um, people learn more? We have a publication that we put out monthly right now, Inspire Light. And we put a lot of our programs in there. Additionally, you can go to our website at krl.org and see what's going on at every library throughout the entire system on any given day. Great, thank you so much. I can't wait to, to read to a dog. Hey Ruby, thank you so much for letting me sneak in for your read to a dog today. And can you tell me a little bit about why you like to read to a dog? It's just fun to have someone there to listen and he's a good listener. <laughs> Very good listener. It makes me feel calm to have someone there. Now I'm here with Katha from Therapy Dogs International to learn a little bit more about how she became involved with this program. Hi, Katha. Hi. Please tell me, how did you first become involved with Therapy Dogs International? My first dog that I got as an adult was just one of those dogs with so much charisma. And when people would stop their cars to come and pet him or my neighbors would come out leaving their dogs in the house barking so they could pet mine, I knew he was something special. So I started doing my research. Therapy Dogs International was offering a test. So we took their evaluation and the rest, as they say, is history. Oh, awesome. So how did you become involved with Read to a Dog? I've been trying to remember the exact details, but it's been almost a decade. I remember that, you know, the librarian who started it had been involved in a similar program in Kansas and wanted to start it here. I think that she approached me when I was at the library checking out books. And we got to talking about dogs and she's like, do you have a, yeah. <laughs> oh, how perfect. So what kind of dog personality is best suited for this kind of program? One of the things I do is I evaluate dogs for Therapy Dogs okay. International. And I tell people that I look for three things. I look for temperament. You want a dog that genuinely loves people. Yeah. I look for connection because therapy dog work really is a partnership. You and your dog are working together. If you can't trust and rely on each other, you're not going to be very successful. And then I look for obedience because you're gonna ask your dog to do things and it's really helpful if they can do that. <laughs> and I'm sure that the children have a favorite dog. So oh, yeah. uh, what makes that, what, what would make one so popular? Well, we, we kind of joke about it because there's usually three dogs here at Sylvan Way. If pressed, I think the librarians would all admit that um, D'Artagnan is hands down their favorite. <laughs> The, the parents and caregivers all seem to gravitate towards Makoa, the rough collie, oh. and the kids all love Honey. She's the little cocker spaniel, and I think she's just the perfect size, and she adores kids. So why does encouraging children to read to a dog help? Dogs are non-judgmental. When you're reading to an adult, you're worried about whether or not they're going to be correcting you, whether or not they're, you're doing it right. The dog just is happy to be with you and listen. So there's no judgment, there's no pressure. There's a large body of research that says being with a dog just calms you down. When the kid is reading to a dog, they're all relaxed. They get to engage with the dog when the dog just goes to sleep. You can say, see, you did such an awesome job. You read him to sleep, isn't that great? Keep reading, you don't want him to wake up. <laughs> That's awesome. If any of our viewers have a dog that they think would be really a, a great fit for Therapy Dogs International, where can they learn more about that? If you go to the Therapy Dogs International website and you look under the brochures tab, it has the testing requirements. The test is based around the American Kennel, um, American Kennel Club's good canine good citizen. There we go, too many acronyms all in right. once and I'm trying to translate right. them. The AKCGC. 
But basically, you want a dog that's going to be calm and resilient in all sorts of circumstances, that genuinely loves people, and that can handle a lot of confusion and chaos. You don't tend to think of it as being work or being difficult for the dog, because what are they doing? They're just going and getting petting or going and laying around and listening to kids read. But everybody has different styles of petting. In a nursing home, somebody with terrible arthritis may be thumping on the dog more than petting, which is not necessarily terribly pleasant. A good therapy dog like D'Artagnan is going to shift forward so that that thumping's between the shoulder blades where it's not painful, where it's not uncomfortable the way it is on the top of the head. And as his partner, I'm gonna be saying, <laughs> He's moving so he get in the spot he likes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for sharing about your work with these dogs. All right, thank you. So Jennifer, can you share a little bit about why you also like to read to a dog? I like to read to a dog because it helps me feel calm and that I can just talk to the dog. That's a great reason. Thank you.